coding, transmitting, and decoding meaning. It can take place in so many different ways, whether it be verbal or non-verbal, personal or non-personal, and visual or physical. Although communication is innate to us, we people still must understand that in order to communicate effectively, we must learn to communicate through codes, symbols, and systems of language. Communication is a learned behavior and a collective practice in which we use symbols to encode and decode meaning. Communication as a process is described by different scholars in various models to shed light on its development, giving emphasis on how each element works. These models serve as a kind of map which shows the framework of communication and helps us understand that each element or part, except noise, is integral to achieving understanding. Hello, dear learners! The school year has just finally started a week ago and I want to ask how it was like to study from home. Are you doing good so far? I hope so. You know, this is just the second week of the quarter and I hope that you sustain the energy, excitement, and patience in learning up until the school year ends and you're able to master the competencies and demonstrate the skills needed in fulfilling the requirements in all subject areas you got. So, are you ready for another episode of Learning With Me? Great! So go get your pen and paper and let's get started. The first model of communication developed in as early as 300 BC is the Aristotle's model, which is considered the earliest mass communication model. Hence, this model of communication is more focused on public speaking than interpersonal communication. Aristotle's model of communication is formed with five basic elements. The speaker, speech, occasion, audience, and effect. This model of communication puts premium importance to the speaker and his speech, which Aristotle says should be prepared and organized for different audience on different time or occasion and for different effects. Aristotle's model is the simplest model of communication. Since it focuses on public speaking, this model illustrates communication as a linear or one-way process, which simply means that a message or speech is simply passed from sender to receiver for an effect or a reason. The speaker plays an important role in public speaking. He or she must analyze his or her audience's needs and consider the setting or the occasion. The speaker's message or speech, in short, should be tailored fit to the audience and the occasion. One famous example given for this model is when Alexander gave a brave speech to his soldiers in the war field about defeating the Persian Empire. In the given example, there are only five elements of communication in play. Alexander, the speaker, his invasion, the speech or what the speech is all about, war field, the occasion or the setting, soldiers, the audience or receivers, and to defeat the Persian Empire, the effect. Clearly, this model of communication is focused on public speaking or mass communication, and it does not illustrate communication as one that is cyclical in process, which is a characteristic of interpersonal communication. There are few criticisms around this model. Number one, there is no concept of feedback. That means it is one way and it is speaker oriented and that the audience is passive. And number two, there is no concept of failure brought about by noise or other forms of barriers. This model therefore can only be used in public speaking. The second model is the Shannon Weaver model of communication. This model was created in 1948 when Claude Elwood Shannon wrote an article, A Mathematical Theory of Communication, 
in Bell System Journal with Warren Weaver. The mathematical theory later came to be known as Shannon-Weaver model of communication. To better understand this model of communication, let us first define these important elements based on their functions. This is because you might get yourself confused later as some terms sound like they overlap in meaning which actually do not. The sender is the person who makes and sends the message. The encoder or the transmitter is the sender who uses machine which converts message into signals. It might also refer to the machine itself. A reason why it is technological and is otherwise known as the telephone model of communication. The channel is the medium used to send the message. The decoder is the machine used to convert signals into message or the receiver who translates the message from signals. The receiver or destination is the person who gets the message or the place where the message must reach. The noise refers to disturbances like thunder and crowd noise and even poor signal reception, which do not let the message get to the receiver as intended or meant. This is how communication takes place as described by this model. The sender generates the message, encodes and sends it through a technological channel like telephone, a telegraph, or a smartphone. The sender converts the message into codes the machine or the device understands. The message is then sent in codes through a medium. Before understanding and interpreting the encoded message through a machine or a device, the receiver has to decode the message. The receptor machine can also act as a decoder itself in some cases. For example, a device that decodes a message from binary digits or waves back into format that can be understood by the receiver or destination. The channel can have noise and the receiver might not be able to decode the message which might cause problems in the communication process. A perfect example may go like this. An online teacher conducts his or her classes via Google Meet. Just as soon as the class starts, his or her reception or internet connection got poor and as a result, his or her first few instructions or words didn't reach the destination or the receiver as intended or meant. What happened was like, by the end of this session, you are expected to... Then the succeeding words have gone missing due to network disruption or poor reception or internet connection. The students would then be like, what ma'am? In this example, the sender is the teacher. The encoder is the device used, could be a smartphone or a laptop. The channel is the wireless connection or internet. The receiver is also any device the students use. The destination is the students. And the noise is the network disruption or poor reception. Other examples include your mother sending you a message via a telephone call. Your mother is the sender and the encoder or the transmitter is the telephone which converts her voice into binary digits to be sent down the telephone line. And your close friend is sending you an email using the World Wide Web or the internet as a channel. Another encoder may also include a radio station, which converts voice into waves to be sent via radio to someone still confused with the idea of transmitter and the presence of technological channel in the given examples? A simpler explanation would be that your brain is the sender, your mouth is the transmitter which encodes using words or sounds understandable to the receiver, air is the channel without which there would be no sound waves and thus the message won't be able to reach the receiver, Another person's ear is the receptor or the receiver, and his brain is the destination which converts into the message the sound waves which act like codes in a machine. That simple. Just like that of Aristotle's model, this model of communication is also subject to a lot of criticisms. 
one of which is the absence of one essential element in the communication process, the feedback. Shannon Weaver model of communication is a linear model. That means it illustrates communication as a one-way process. Well, it's easy to say that in some instances of communication, feedback does not occur or does not reach their speaker. Like when we are watching television or listening to a radio station, where we don't tend to let people talking on the television or the radio station know what we are thinking. That means we simply watch or listen to the show. In most cases, however, where communication uses a machine or a device like a smartphone or a laptop, feedback occurs. For example, a video call or chat between friends or a reply email. The fourth model of communication is that of Schrams, which was proposed in 1954. This model of communication has its roots from the Shannon Weaver model itself. However, unlike the Shannon Weaver model, this model of communication introduces the concept of feedback. Also, one important element introduced in this model is what Schrams calls field of experience, which refers to anything both the speaker and the receiver or the communicators bring into the communication process. This could be an experience, background knowledge about the subject or the topic of conversation, interest, cultural background, and even religious affiliation. The participant's field of experience is greatly considered by this model because it may influence the way they interpret the message they send each other. This model illustrates communication as a two-way process and thus also emphasizes the importance of encoding and decoding in the process. Schramm believes that information is of no use unless and until it is carefully put into words and conveyed to others. Encoding plays an important role because it initiates the communication process by converting an idea, information or thoughts into words and or actions understandable to the receiver. Having received the encoded message sent by the speaker, it is then the responsibility of the receiver to interpret it. And if he or she is not able to decode or understand it, the message or information is of no use. This is the reason why Schramm included the concept of field of experience in his model. The overlapping area between the speaker and the receiver represents the experience, knowledge, idea, interest, or anything common between them which may help communication work. The wider the overlapping region or area in their fields of experience, the higher the possibility of understanding. Imagine a graphic artist and a conservationist talking about mining and other illegal human activities that damage our natural resources. Their fields of experience may barely overlap and that would pose a problem in the communication process. Yes, they might understand each other, but that would most likely be to a little extent. I'm afraid communication may not even progress the same way when a graphic artist talks to a layout artist or to a video editor with whom he or she shares common knowledge and interests. Well, I'm not saying that communication won't be able to take place between people of different background or interests, but as much as understanding and effective communication are concerned, communication is most likely to progress and become successful between people whose fields of experience overlap to a greater extent compared to that of a very little extent. Another example may include the monogamous and the polygamous participants in a conversation talking about the sanctity of marriage. The two might hardly understand each other or agree at one point or idea because they are highly influenced by their religious beliefs, personal choices, and cultural background. Running across the participants' fields of experience is feedback. Feedback is used by the speaker to know whether the receiver understood the message as intended or meant, 
also by which the former and the latter exchange places, making the process cyclical or two-way. Unlike that of the Shannon Weaver model of communication, the speaker and the receiver both play an active role in the communication process. When communication becomes successful, the overlapping region between the speaker's and the receiver's field of experience will become wider, meaning they may have well understood each other and arrived at a consensus or new ideas. The fourth model of communication is the transactional model. And as the name suggests, this model is a two-way process with the inclusion of feedback as an essential element. As shown in the figure, this model is more interactive. Hence, it is mostly used for interpersonal communication. There is a collaborative exchange of messages between communicators with the aim of understanding each other. It also shows that a barrier, such as noise, may interfere with the flow of communication. Delving deeper on the concept of noise as illustrated in this model, Noise may come from the communicators themselves, from the channels, and even from the way they encode and decode the message. Other than the physical noise, psychological noise, and physiological noise, as explained in my first video, please check out the link in the description box, other types of noise or barriers will be discussed further in my succeeding videos. A noise that comes from the communicators themselves could be psychological, physiological, and even their poor understanding of the message due to lack of background knowledge or interest. Noise in the channel may include low-sounding voice interrupted by the physical or environmental noise like the murmuring sound of the people around, the beeping of deepness, and the like. Noise in encoding and decoding may come from the language used which the other might not be able to understand or the conflict of meaning between the spoken language and the accompanying nonverbal actions. So those are the four models of communication. There are other few known models of communication like that of White's and Berlos model which I'm going to discuss in my succeeding video. Just always remember that these models, though different in quite a few reasons, converge or meet at one common idea. That is, communication is a process. And whatever purpose we engage in communication for, understanding is our supreme goal. That's it, dear learners. Learning is fun, isn't it? Again, I hope you enjoyed learning with me, Mr. Paul Yanes Gamaru, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon on our next episode of Learning. Should you have questions about my lesson for this episode, you may write them in the comment section down below. Or you can reach me on my Facebook and Instagram account. Thank you and have a good day!